Hello, today is the 7th of April, 2011. Welcome to today's Silver Log, the Silver Analysis. And I want to start off with a comment that I received that states, Hi Derek, thank you for all your amazing videos, from which I have learned so much. However, I'm a little bit confused. Why is it that you said on your blog that you would be selling at $40.70 for a correction of 15%, whereas you said in your videos that it is heading for the 50 level? Well, yes, it's heading towards that 50 level, I truly believe. Moving upwards to uh, 48 in that area. But at the same point, it can very easily have moves that bring it lower before it makes it towards that level. I'm not saying I want to see a correction or even that I think there's a good chance of it. It's just very often times you get these moments where the market does give back at least 15%. Going from 31 to 26, this was your standard 15% correction. We are now getting overextended and we are due for a correction at this level. Now when we first had this breakout above here, I was looking originally on a textbook economics or textbook technical analysis to move that level in here. And that level being going from buying to selling slash hold and like I said it's a small sale not a big one I wouldn't risk more than a half of a percent of your silver portfolio but do what works for you just going over different key strategies and how I would play this and because I was giving it the benefit of the doubt for having extra gains I decided I didn't want to play within this 36 38 area that's where the numbers were pointing towards and it's worked so far now how far this can go up it's very possible that we go up to this level with very little resistance, very little. But if you are selling at this 4070 area, I'm stating if you're going to sell here and you're going to buy back in this area and here, you want to be able to sell for the same rate that you are buying at. Therefore, if you're buying $3 over spot, $4 over spot, then you want to try to sell for $3 over spot also. Find, if you get to be able to network within some people, placing different classified ads, and soon sites like Spotmex will be open where you can sell your metals and not have to pay as many of the uh, commissions or fees that, pay, that you can get with eBay that just totally bring you back down to spot when you're selling maples and your eagles. Now, as far as this chart, how it's concerned... After the sideways correction, it's had a nice breakout pattern, and it's really consolidating in a nice manner, which really should bring us above this 40 significant level. Now, we'll just uh, go through some different possibilities for what may happen towards the 50, because as I was stating within the top, if you get to the wards, the area where it's starting to sell off, then this is what I'm talking about as far as trying to sell on peaks and buy on lower points as you would be making a little bit of a dollar cost average save to do so. Now at the same point, let's just assume that it's just a correction through time and you don't get a chance to rebuy in here. If we're trading something like this, then at some point, if you were trying to buy back cheaper, you may have to buy right back in at the same price that you sold it before. These are other scenarios that may take place. Also at the same point, if you buy back in here and then you have moves that bring you higher while well, you're buying when it goes lower and you're selling when it goes higher because the play is really to get towards the 50 but even the 48 level roughly in here and this was going on from the breakout even going back the breakout above 31 but well right in here that's a breakup above 31 when you're moving towards making it to a level of 50, you want to buy on the lower end of the range, which is between 30 and 40, which is why I think it's really good to be buying on strength within this rally. But on the way towards 50, when you're on the top end of this, my school of thinking is that I would, be ra I would rather be buying on any kind of correction from this point of 41 ish up to the 50 area is to only buy on the uh, on the dips now i stayed on the long term time frame the bias is still long if for example you have a paycheck every week every two weeks every friday you want to buy silver if that's working keep on doing it because at these levels they are still 
rock bottom prices. But that means as far as corrections, say for example, okay, there we go. There's your correction. You can buy type thing. And if you keep on having these type of movements, then you might have two, three different buying opportunities if you're looking for corrections. Also, you can have these corrections happen through that of time where you could end up having the market look something like this. And then there's your breakout. So here's areas to be buying on a correction. Of course, something like this would be that of time. So I'm going to uh, just finish off talking about that section there. Now move on more towards the chart because I've been talking about volatility. And the volatility on the daily chart, this is the daily one. This is using the um, movements that it has top to bottom. This is taking a 30 and 120 period average. And what I'm seeing in this is a stage four type of pattern switching to a stage one. Well, it switched back to a stage one in here, and it stayed in a stage one for the entire duration, which means it's after going on a downtrend, it's been going sideways, and it looks breaking up past this level as if the volatility is just going to keep soaring. Now, this volatility came from 2009, because if we take a look at the top end, this is where the volatility gets measured from. If we draw a line in here, we can see that the support level is really matching what hap or occurred in here. And the volume, obviously because this was declining, we came from much higher volatility before March of 2009. This was coming from the bottom of 08, where the market was having wild days for turmoil. Breaking past this 70 level, could bring, well definitely is going to be higher volatility because that's how it's measured by, but it seems as if if you go and buy chart analysis, you're making these higher lows, if it manages to come up and it's possible that this volatility could either strike in on potential tops as well as explosive gains. Now the volatility short term that I've been showing is in the downtrend still trying to consolidate sideways not still really really low basically I guess the key trend line would be something like this and here still well below it with it with the low volatility this tells me that the higher gains should be coming towards us and within this uh, hourly chart the market's holding up really well within this 39, 33 level that I was talking about a few days ago, as that was what I would predict to be predict, excuse me, to be the 76.4% Fibonacci within the range of this particular bottom, and then what I would be predicting to be the top of $41 and around 40 cents per ounce. So this is the 39.33 area. Also, this could very easily become the 61.8%, where if this line matches with this line, then it's going to 43 or 44 per ounce. I think if we break below this level, the support level that we've been holding, that would most likely make a test towards this five-day moving average. Breaking below the five-day moving average, the previous high of 38, we've had support there once on the liftoff, which was in here. We could very easily come back and have another test of it, but I think the chances of five holds on this one should be uh, fairly good. And it could easily also could, could continue to correct through time and then move sideways, say within a range of 39 and 39.80. And then by this point in here, it will be showing that it's corrected for a decent amount through time. And then thus, it would be a test of the five-day moving average. So I'd like to thank you for watching this. Take care and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.